107, 105, Knicks go down and play. You know what, man? I was tight too, man, because as the, as the crowd was chanting, uh, F Trey Young, <laughs> I saw him taking it all in. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he was he was ready for it. And in the third quarter, second quarter, it was it got loud in there for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was I hope he doesn't get his revenge. And he got his revenge, bro. He got his revenge in the last play. I mean, really the whole fourth quarter. Because the whole fourth quarter was a Trey Young show. Um, between the free throws, the, uh, the he had two big assists for three-pointers. One to Bogdanovich in the corner. And one to uh, DeAndre Hunter at the top of the key three. He, had, he got the call on RJ, which was a ticky-tack call. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the last play of the game, he burnt, he took burnt Frank around the corner. There was no help defense and got a wide open layup for the win. It's just one game, bro. One you know, game. I just, I, it's just one game, bro. Yeah. What, what, you, what do you think about it overall? Yeah, no, it was it was definitely, you could tell the jitters were there for us, for sure. Uh, I, I got to give props to the Hawks. It's the only time I will give them props was they, they came out from the jump and they were playing well the entire game. Um, and they were prepared for, for a team that, just like us, that have not been in it for a, a, quite some time, Trey Young in his first playoffs. I got to give him credit. He did, he did a solid job, uh, controlled the game. Uh, and you could tell we played, uh, we played a little nervous in the beginning. Nothing was going down. Poor Reggie had a rough game offensively for us. Uh, we talked about Julius many times. We're probably going to talk about him uh, throughout the night. He had a rough uh, offensive showing for today. Uh, R.J. Barrett, to me, I feel like he had his moments, but he didn't He didn't really capitalize on him. He had that amazing dunk. He had some great offensive. He was hustling really well, rebounding, doing a lot of stuff, but I feel like he wasn't as aggressive as he should have been. Um, the bench did what the bench does. You know, I was really proud of you know us picking up the pieces when we were dropping them, and when your best player is not playing as well as he was, the bench was doing what they had to do, and that's all you could really ask for. And to only lose this game by two points uh, with our best player uh, having the shooting night he had, I'll take it. Like you said, it's one game, it's a seven game series. Let's bounce back. I just hate losing game ones when we have home court advantage because I get those 2013 vibes all over again. But it's all good. I feel like we got a chance here. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. We're, we're two evenly matched teams. Right. You know what I mean? We're, we're definitely two evenly matched teams. And I'm with you. I'm just dialing into the phones. Phone lines are going to be up 657 383 1509. We're getting that going. Um, the thing is, is that, you know, as you said, not having Randall be at his best. And still losing by two, I think you feel good about yourself going into the rest sure. of the series, uh, because it is an evenly matched team. And, and, and I said in the pre, in the pregame that this is going to come down to the benches, mm -hmm. whose bench is going to outplay the other. And I felt confident in the Rose Burks IQ triumphant. And listen, they scored over forty five points, and I don't think. There is a bench combination for the Hawks defensively that can slow this unit down. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna trap Rose, Burks is gonna be your other ball handler ready to get it going. If you're gonna trap Burks, Rose will get it going, IQ will get it going. So I like our chances there, bro. I, I definitely like our chances there. Yeah. And you know, it was just tough, man. I agree with you. I wanted to see RJ get a lot more aggressive. <clears throat> uh, Bullock as well. Bullock is Bullock is our gun. We we need Bullock. Um, to be on the money, yeah. and he he just wasn't there tonight. He yeah. wasn't there tonight. I mean, six for fifteen from RJ wasn't that bad. He gave us eleven boards. Like like we were talking about the before the the series even started, we we're talking about all hands on deck on the rebounding and RJ Barrett from the jump. You can see that they were limiting second chance points in the beginning because RJ Barrett was getting the rebound while Nerlens Noel focused on boxing out Clint Capella, and it was working for the majority of that first half. Uh, Clint Capella and the the others got away from us a little bit there as the second half went on, but. You know, um, for RJ Barrett to be six of fifteen, um, the three point ball was hit, was hurting him today, one for six. Um, but yeah, like like you said, I just wanted to see him be a little more aggressive because there was moments where he was doing he was doing a lot. He was doing a lot of the heavy lifting. He was helping Derrick Rose out um, before you know, while while Burks was on the bench. Um, you gotta give a lot, big shout out to Taj Gibson, who I thought was doing a solid job against Capella there for a few uh, possessions, especially when he came out earlier on. Um, like you said, man, I, 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 it, it's frustrating the way we lost for sure, especially I'm sure for you being in attendance because I can only imagine watching it. I was having serious FOMO, bro. I was having serious FOMO. I was wishing I was there, but um, yeah, man. But to lose by two points in that kind of a game, it hurts. But I'll take my chances with that. With Julius Randle going six for twenty three and we only lose by two, I feel good about that. I feel good. About that yeah man yo listen the garden was electric Banging. that's crazy shout out to everybody that was at msg 
um everybody that i ran to at m ran into at msg um um definitely was was a good time and the vibes was there man Fifteen thousand strong it was loud early it'll be loud again on wednesday mm -hmm. and uh and i think yeah i think that might have that might have had the knicks tight you know <laughs> i think that might have had the knicks tight for for the, you know the opening eight minutes or so because the shots just weren't falling the shots were there for us in the, in the early stages of the game it, it they just weren't falling yeah um but but you know give credit tibbs was not playing around bro three minutes into the first <laughs> quarter alfred payton have a seat <laughs> yeah. in the corner at the end of the bench like you usually do we got to get real now we got to get serious brings in derrick rose and that changed the tone of the game yeah you know that changed the tone of the game uh, it was interesting to see how the Hawks countered because the thing is when Peyton came in the game, why Tibbs went, took him out so fast was because they had Collins on Peyton mm -hmm. and Collins wasn't respecting his shot. Mm -hmm. He was waiting for him to drive and, and he already knew that if he drove, he was, he had no shot there. So Tibbs, he pulled the eject button fast and, and got Rose back in the game, bro. And it was then on top of that, uh, it, <laughs> I don't know about you or seeing it in person, Trey Young had like three early wide open shots and I'm looking to see what Alfred Payton is on the replay and he just got lost for for whatever reason he's there's two guys on John Collins on one possession and then on the other possession he got uh he got eaten up by the screen that wasn't even that strong so it, 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 he wasn't giving it on the defensive end and like you said it was a liability on the offense so yeah Tom Thibodeau was not playing any games this time and he uh took him out instantly but then that draws the question that we've been asking all season why not just cut the loss now i feel like emmanuel quickly who might not have the same kind of game in game two or you know we can go go to frank new and whatnot why not why not start with somebody else because i feel like why just why not just cut that loss with those three minutes see what was it eight minutes he played tonight because you know it almost feels like a handicap at this point that we're just giving them a little head start every single time and i know you know it'd be nice to start derrick rose but we really need him to come off of that second unit come off the bench with that second unit so i don't know it's like being a dead horse but man in the playoffs you're seeing it it, it, it hits a little bit differently than the regular season for sure for sure I you know I don't know. Do we go Burks first or do we just go to you know rip the bandaid off, go to Rose? I think you know we should do that. Yeah. But then as you said, the second unit you kind of lose that spark. But yo, I think Burks can get the job done with for quickly. Us, yeah. Burks IQ can get it done. Sprinkle in a little bit of Obi. Yeah. You want to get Frank? I said move Frank up. Yeah. You know we we don't have to rely on Frank to you know make a stop when he's ice cold. Right. Just move him up. Right. Yeah. Move him up, you know, move him up. You start rows, you bring a second unit of Burks, IQ, Frank, and I think that helps us. It helps us get on to their shooters, the Snells, the herders of the world, with Frank on playing defense. You still have him as a capable three-point shooter, and then you have Burks and IQ running as the playmakers. I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. I don't know, but I, the question is, are we going to see it happen? I, You know, we talked about it. We think Tibbs is going to stick to his unit to the end. But, man, it just feels like we're just giving these teams a head start. And it's seeing it in the playoffs, like I said, it's not the same as seeing it in a regular season game and having the hero heroics happen how they do. But um, I don't know. It, it just felt like I'm glad he did it. He, he took him out quick, but it's still, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a fan of seeing that. Like, we cannot have those slow starts and playing catch up the entire game. I don't like it. For right now, let's get to the people on the Discord um let's jump in with uh with king deej king deej what's going on bro you gotta unmute your mic bro what's good what's good can y'all hear me can y'all hear me I can't even... oh there we go there we go i can hear myself what's up man yo first off i know it's late you know the wi-fi cp's in the hotel ck yeah. got the little wi-fi tripping but hit it's that thumbs end. up i don't think it's on my end it could just be a technical glitch yeah. with uh Side. Oh, it is what it oh, is. Yeah, it is what it is. We work with what we got, man. Hit that thumbs up button. The garden was electric. Unfortunately, I have my first vaccine. I don't get my second one until Wednesday. So I will be in there, God willing, if they make it to the second round. But we got ourselves a battle right here. I just wanted to tell everybody, relax. You know, everybody's panicking because it's only game one. I like what I saw, except for what I saw from Randall. But I think it was just nerves. And I think, honestly, Randall was just in his own mind like the team bit the vets came to play they bailed him out burks rose taj they bailed him out so even rj as i mean rj didn't play efficiently but rj did a lot a lot of stuff that didn't show up on the stats he did so i'm you know i'm, I'm not worried about the game they only lost by two what i am concerned about with tibbs is he's listen we can't let 
I'm sorry. I, we can't let Trey Young just do whatever he want to do, guys. Like, we can't let him go downhill. He, he shot one three. It was the logo on Derrick Rose. I, I'm okay with that. That's a tough shot, but that's his range. But we can't let this man go downhill because if he goes downhill, then Click Capella becomes a factor. We right. won the rebounding boards 49 to 42, so they did their job with that. But you got to you gotta take away his floater game. He's clearly a floater god. He's, he leads in the top five of the league in floaters. So I, I just want to see how Tibbs adjusts to that. Are you going to – we might have to treat him like Steph. You see how Memphis and the That's Lakers played Steph in the last two games? Just double him. Double yeah. him for somebody else. Because, as, as, I mean, all credit to the, to the Hawks. Obviously, they're a great shooting team. But none of those guys put the ball on the floor to do anything besides Lou Will. That was it. Everybody else is just spot-up shots. Spot-up shots. Create a shot off the dribble for three. They're not going downhill. Trey Young is downhill. Lou Will was downhill, and that hurt us a lot because they got a lot of points from that, bro. So hopefully Tibbs does the Steph Curry treatment. I don't want to see him go under because that man, that kid got range. That's right. And it's just got it's got to be the Steph. It's got to be the Steph. He had a quick hook on Peyton, so nobody could be mad at that. That kid, Peyton played eight minutes. Mm. Statistically, that's two minutes each quarter, bro. Nobody should be here in here talking about Peyton. He's not even a factor. <laughs> not even a factor. I'm upset yeah. with Frank for giving him the right. Like, stop giving. I don't understand why Frank always gives the person a strong hand. Like, I hate that. But we're going to be all right. Game two's on Wednesday. I'm not worried. I told y'all this is going to be a long series. I still got them winning in six. But Atlanta's no joke. So if y'all wasn't taking them seriously, got to take them seriously now. Tim's got to readjust. The vets was there. The rookie, the rookies. Let me shout out. Hold on, hold on. Let me shout out the, the pick that I wanted before I leave. Obi Toppin, man. All the disrespect, and this kid looked more ready than Randall tonight. And that's not a knock. I'm just saying. Obi Toppin's a, a older player, played longer in college. You know, he had the ankle injury to begin the season. No training camp. He looks solid out there, bro. Quickly, a flamethrower, as, as Wally Zerbiak would say, man. So, Randall, I just need you to get it together. Here's one good stat about Randall to make everybody feel better. Uh, from long breaks, he struggles that first game in. If you if you remember the Milwaukee game this year and in the last game of last year when, uh, before All-Star break, he struggles. So this is, a real, this is a real thing now. Like, it's real. He struggles after a long break. So they had a week off. Hopefully that does him better. I know y'all got more calls, so I just wanted to throw that out there. We good. Everybody relax, breathe. We in here. It's six right. games. Right. Six, seven. All right, man, I'm out. Peace and love, y'all. King Deej, King DJ from Staten Island. Appreciate it, man. Yo, it's a series. It's a series, man. What we want to do now is split the games, split the home, yeah. and then go down to ATL and make some noise, man. So, as you said, yeah, Randall, he just wasn't he, he just wasn't in the rhythm, definitely wasn't comfortable out there. 15 points, 14 boards is not going to get it done for you. He's got to be better. I don't think it was anything that the Hawks did, you know, uh, uh, that that threw him off defensively. I just think his shots weren't full, and 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 his decision making wasn't crisp. This is playoffs. Got to take it up a notch. So, uh, Ash, how, how we feeling out there, Ash? How you, how you doing? Listen, Papa Moss and I were having a a, a heart attack watching this game. Um, the cardiac Knicks struck again. This time in the playoffs. Look, there were a lot of good things that we did, and then there were a lot of bad things that we did. Um. You know, I want to focus on the good first. I think, you know, the bench was fantastic. I mean, Derrick Rose, first of all, Burks, pay that man right now. Back up the Brinks truck. Whatever he wants, give it to him. Um, I think that Derrick Rose obviously was there and, and full force, ready to go, kept us in hey, the game. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. No, you're good. You're good. Somebody, they were saying there's a oh. chat, but uh, I think you're good now. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Oh, they were you're saying... Fine. They were saying I was loud. I don't know. I no, didn't touch you're anything. Good. So. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. I just, you know, here's the thing with Julius Randle. Not a great game from for him. Six of 24. So um, that's not great. But also for me, look, you're not going to have the best offensive games from everybody, right? Everyone's not going to score the most points on the board. <laughs> Julius Randle may not always be the top scorer of the night. But what I don't like that he did was that if you look at his scores, if you look at his stat line, rather... Um, I don't like the fact that if it is, if it's not your night, then be a floor general, facilitate, 
pass that ball out. If you look at his assists, he only had four assists the entire game, which means to me he was ten trying to make things happen that were not happening for him. He was trying to put up shots that were not going to fall. It was just not his night. So what do you do in that event? You go ahead and you become a, an assist machine. Pass it out to the guys with the hot hand. Keep the ball movement facilitate. Facilitate the ball movement. Pass back out kick it out keep the possession alive the goal of every single possession is not who's going to score who's going to have the most points it is to score that's all you have to do at the end of the day just give it to somebody who can get the points on the board you don't have to be the guy to take the shot especially if it's not your night i think he has this hero mentality sometimes where he feels like he has to be the one and if he's not the one then he doesn't have a plan b always have a plan b also i just feel like we were, we were getting killed on the pick and roll. It was absolutely astronomical how we kept falling for the same trap at least 10 times in the same game. Ultimately, that was the play that won the Hawks the game. It was the exact same play. And look, you're not going to be able to defend 30, 30 footers. You know, if a guy's chucking something up from the logo, it's hard to defend that. But if they are trying to get points in the paint, this is, a, this is a New York Knicks defensive heavy team. If a guy wants to go ahead and score on the paint, you make it difficult for him. You bulldoze him. You don't let him get points in the paint. That's the one thing you should constantly be defending. And we did not defend the paint the way we should have tonight. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, first on, on the Julius thing, I think part of the, you know, the, only the four assists because he, he just wasn't putting enough pressure on the defense. A lot of times when he's getting those double digit or close to double digit assist games is because He's attacking the basket. You know, he, he's making the proper reads out of the double team. And tonight, I just thought it was just it was just too much one on one. He was trying to go to the baseline. That was his go to move. It wasn't really falling for him. He did hit a big three down in the fourth quarter uh, to, to keep us in the game for sure. But overall, he's just got to be better. You know, overall, he, he's just got to yeah. be. Better. So uh, I agree with you on that. And yeah, you're right. You know, pick and roll. They, they were shredding us on the pick and roll uh, all game long, whether it was yeah. just, you know, Trey Young having, you know, open room to the basket to drop those floaters in. He was getting Capella and John Collins over the top of the defense. They were also um, screening the the um, the big. So Taj and Noel were getting jammed up on those pick and rolls as well. And so, you know, give credit to the Hawks. They were executing it well and they had the guys to finish. But now it's on Tibbs to play that chess match. And, uh, and, and let's see how we adjust. <laughs> And let's get back to it. HD23, I'm going to you in the Discord. I'm really disappointed, but at the same time, I'm hopeful. Because you have to look at it this way. On a night when Julius Randle wasn't at his best, we only lost by two points, which is a bright spot. And I mean, yeah, definitely a lot of disappointment, of course. I think I've accepted it now that if we make adjustments, I think we can still win this series in six. But there's still so much bad, so much good. Alfred Payton, I'm getting really annoyed with him. I mean, every time I watch, I'm like yelling at my TV to just take him out the game. Because he, he just lost it. He's not the Alfred Payton that played in the beginning of the season when he had a couple bright spots. I'm down to maybe put maybe Emmanuel quickly. Or maybe, if you want, put Frank in. Give him a few minutes. Maybe he'll get it rolling. Because if anything, Frank will distribute the ball and get your shooters better shots. I mean, I know a couple of times Reggie Bullock was a little off today, which is also another bright spot when you think about it, because exactly. on a night when Reggie Bullock wasn't good, mm -hmm. the Knicks were still in it to win it. I'm going to be short. I'm going to be real quick. I'm a little worried about our center situation. Hopefully, Noel's okay. But it's been a pleasure talking to you guys, and I hope we win game two. I'm nervous. These next three days are going to be long. Have a good night. Ari's in the building. Ari on the Discord. Ari, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, CP? What's going on, man? How you doing? Good, man. How you feeling, bro? Oh, God, man. That was it's been one of the worst weeks ever, and this was TK absolutely and terrible. TK and Ashley are here, too. Hi. TK, what's up, man? Ashley, congrats on uh, the, the New York Times. Unlike you, you, I don't I, I don't spread hate and division. You know, I, I think we're all on the same team, so... You know, I think it's all about love and inclusive inclusivity. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what? I'm just saying. Today, but all of Francis eggs. I'm trying what? to. Stop. I mean, I mean, shout out Jalen Julius. You you castigated Jalen Julius because he shouted me out, and you know, I don't think you should be shout. I don't think you should be like 
telling people not to shout me out. I thought we we're on the same team. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know I didn't we were know. going back um, five, ten the shows beef. ago. I the can, beef will never ahead. end, bro. <laughs> all right, all right, whatever. It, it's fine. But listen, real talk, though, like, the reason why we lost this game is simple. It's, it's, it's their all-stars showed up and ours didn't. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I can't hear the show because the Discord won't let me hear the show, so I don't know what you guys have been talking about. But, I mean, when your best player misses 17 shots, you know, it's going to be tough mm-hmm. for you to win, you know? So... You know, and listen, he's allowed to have a bad game. It's fine. But, you know, everybody's calling this dude the king of New York. Ashley clowning on me saying I wanted to trade him for, for chopped cheese, even though when I wanted to trade him for three first-round picks. And I'm just saying, before we could crown this guy anything, before we extend him the max money, let's see what he does in the playoffs at least, right? And he's allowed a bad game. It's fine. But let's see how he responds in game two. That's the real reason why we lost. Like, yeah, you could stop the Trey Young pick and roll. Obviously, Tibbs is going to shut that down next game. They obviously couldn't do that down the stretch. That was, like, technically why we lost down the stretch. But you're not going to win games in the, in the NBA playoffs if your best player misses 17 shots. And then he misses free throws. He turns the ball over. And then you're still starting Peyton for some reason. So you're spotting the other team six points. Like, you know, if Peyton didn't play, we probably would have won this game just off of the plus minus because we only lost by, like, two points, right? So, um, you know, that's the real reason why we lost. But I also think, listen, man, I called in. I forgot when it was. Ashley wasn't here, but it, it was – I was I was sipping. I was sipping during the day. It was, it was like, the last episode of this episode before that, I was sipping heavy. Yeah, so I don't really remember much of it. <laughs> but all I, remember, all I remember saying is that the two reasons why we're going to lose, why we could lose is because we can't close games and – because um, we can't close games, and because we have no off, like offensively, we have like no creativity, like down, the, like like no creativity on offense. We go through stretches where we can't score the ball, right? And that's listen. Tibbs is a great coach. He's coach of the year, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I still don't understand why this guy doesn't run like run plays for Emmanuel quickly. Like, I don't understand. Like, the guy is shooting 26-foot three-point shots. He's driving to the lane, shooting off his right foot, floaters over Capella. He's clearly hot. There's no excuse for this guy to shoot one or two shots in a half, in the second half of the game. Like, they should be using quickly the same way that the Warriors use Steph. And I'm not saying he's Steph Curry, but I'm saying when your team has struggles to score the ball, why not have Emmanuel quickly, who's a dead open shooter, run off-ball actions for this guy, have him go pin down screens, yeah. run around screens back and forth to put at least pressure on the defense. Like, that last play of the game, .9 seconds left, you're telling me with .9 seconds left in the NBA playoffs, your go-to play is to throw the ball to Randall on the elbow and have him do a fall-away jump shot? Like, it's a, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous to me. There's no offensive creativity from him. There's no set oh, plays oh, down oh, the stretch. Oh, I can't stand Burks as an inbounder. Yeah. I don't. I, yeah. Nothing Made good no has sense. ever happened to Burks as an inbounder. That's my guy. That's my man. I I, I told my guy I was with uh, that that Burks is gonna have a big game, and he did. But I can't stand him inbounding because it's almost a disaster. It's almost a five second violation sometimes, and other times he's just not getting the ball in properly. So he almost airmailed Randall, and he didn't get a good shot off to end the game. And that's on Tibbs because he's 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 telling the Burks to inbound the ball. And listen. If it wasn't for Alec Burks being like Kobe tonight, we would have lost by double digits, right? Like, you know, it just, you know, I just, every single time down the stretch of games, right? Every single time when it's like a one or two point game or it's tie game and there's like 15 seconds left, the Knicks never score, all right? And it's, and it's just like, you, you know Emmanuel quickly's hot. You know he's the best shooter on the team, right? When if, I, if I'm Tibbs in .9 seconds, I'm trying to get quickly an open look. And if it's not to quickly, I'm trying to get something to the basket. You know what I mean? It's just like every single time down the stretch, it's the same stuff. It's, it's, it's Randall Iso. It's hoping that Alec Burks takes a fallaway jump shot over, like, pulls some Kobe stuff. And you're not going to win in the playoffs when, when, when every game comes down to the last three minutes in the playoffs, especially when you're a team like the Knicks. It's going to come how you close the game. And Tibbs doesn't even give him a chance because it's the, there's, there's no creativity, man. It's just give the ball to Randall, give the ball to, uh, to Alec Burks, or run Derrick Rose pick and roll, man. And when you have a weapon like Quickly, 
who's clearly the best shooter on the team, who's hitting crazy shots. You could tell he's hot tonight. They got it. You, he cannot shoot the ball two times a game, man. Two times and a half. They need to let him shoot him more. So, you know, I think this is on Randall because he didn't show up. I think this is on Tibbs because his offensive creativity is non-existent. Very predictable deep offense to guard. And then, you know, like, it is what it is. You know, the refs didn't do us favors, but you can't blame the refs, man. But at the end of the day, this is a learning experience to see how Julius Randle bounces back. He's allowed a bad game. But, you know... It's just something like you know. It's just something to look for. So you know, I'm still confident. I still lost a lot of money this week. It's been a very bad week, all right. But I'm still confident, and hopefully they could, you know, turn it around. So thank you for the call.